we are at Lassiter Place is what we like to call it. It's between Davis and Sulphur, Oklahoma. My name is Bruce Reynolds, and I currently rent the land. This land had been neglected for approximately at least 20 years. By that, I mean it was overgrazed. Too many cattle were running on here and allowed the, the cedars and other underbrush to kind of take over. Cedars are very invasive, but I've been working real closely with NRCS to restore this land. Our goal is to get as much native pasture, as many plant species as we can, we'd like to have. The problem with ranching cattle is that for a naturalist, they're, they're called forbs. For a rancher, they call weeds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Way to go. I'm Julie Hoffman. I am a naturalist at Lake Murray State Park and a rancher's girlfriend. <laughs> Julie and I are both very environmentally conscious. She more so than I. I always have to look at a bottom line. Uh, so it's nice to, to lease this place, but if I can't make any money on it, then I need to go spend my time doing something else. The prairie and the pasture is where I really feel connected to and at home with. I don't know if I'm really even bringing much to the table other than don't mow that, don't cut that, don't spray that. <laughs> Together we make a really good pair as far as taking care of the place and, and trying to make it productive cattle-wise as well as for the monarch butterflies and, and our bees. Um, Ecosystems our... definitely are being created. Last spring, in spring of 2016, I saw a single monarch all spring in northern Oklahoma. Just one. Wow. Yeah, it was bad. It was that sad. is bad. And, it and kind of makes year, my heart hurt a little. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I'm Ray Morans. I'm a pollinator ecologist with the Xerces Society and NRCS. Monarch conservation is a big focus of my work. Notice the leaves of this one are very wide right. and sort of rounded. This is green antelope horn milkweed, and the other one is spider milkweed. Monarchs love them both. We could search it for eggs, and uh, probably not gonna find any, but we might. No, I'm not seeing any monarch eggs. Turns out that Oklahoma is one of the most important states for monarch biology yeah. and conservation. I was hoping they'd be on this really open one. When folks think of what a butterfly looks like, they usually think of a large orange butterfly with black stripes. They think of monarchs. Uh, they're beautiful creatures. They have a fascinating life cycle. And they're certainly uh, an important part of our natural heritage that most of us grew up with. But there are a lot fewer monarchs than there used to be. So I'm looking for other eggs. Don't see any. About seven or eight years ago, there was a migration through this place. I was driving down the county road and literally stopped because there were so many coming across. And so that, that was pretty cool to see. I'd like to see that again. I would too. Their populations are declining and something has to be done. And the alternative was we were staring at monarchs becoming an endangered species. When that occurs, if you find an endangered species on something, that just means you can't spray, you can't do wholly anything hardly. Okay, the monetary side says we need to do this just so we don't get shut down completely. The other side of me says we need to do this because it's the right thing to do. So here is the first monarch egg we found this morning. Shaped sort of like a football. Pretty soon this egg will turn dark and then it'll turn into a tiny little caterpillar. Uh, very small and that caterpillar will start eating this milkweed plant. These areas used to be beautiful expanses of native tall grass and mixed grass prairie. And now they've become forests of cedar trees with very low diversity. I knew that I had a problem in this place with cedars, and someone had told me that NRCS had funds available to help with that. This particular ground that we're clearing right now is part of the NRCS Monarch Project. So after we've dozed them out, the second step is we just let them dry. Next spring, around February time frame, then I can just light the match and the fuel itself, the grass will carry the flame. It'll be black. I'm Brandon Chandler with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. I'm a district conservationist here in Oklahoma. What's really interesting about this place, Bruce, is you can really see your transition of progress from what you started two or three years ago. You still have areas that are still yet to go. So it's just this painted picture that you can see different stages. 
Yeah, it kind of gives you hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was yeah. able to connect with them, get five years worth of contracts, procedure eradication, and then also for the prescribed fire. And then this last go around was specifically to improve monarch habitat. I felt the responsibility is I got to give them a hotel here to at least kind of lay over a little while. That's right. And the fact that NRCS is willing to help me with that just makes it that much easier for me to go ahead and implement. It's amazing. A female monarch can find milkweed plants that are an inch tall. I did not know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just by sense of smell, they can smell the milkweeds and then they land on it and then they lay an egg. Oh, my gosh. But it's really a miracle. The cedars are being removed and they're being burned, and then you have this emergence of seeds that have possibly laid dormant for 25 to 30 years. That's the glory of burning. Is it a monarch? <laughs> Sam, Sam, come here. I'll keep him up here. You go oh, look there at there it goes. Oh, yeah. We've just found a monarch. She's been landing on these purple flowers over here. This is the kind of plant that uh, we'd like to get a little more of out in the landscape provide food for uh, adult monarchs. Look over this way, we've got quite the display. In this part of Oklahoma, this might be just about perfect monarch habitat. They've got a plant that they can lay their eggs on so that the caterpillars will be able to survive. And then the female could fly a few inches over here and nectar on these flowers. This is moss verbena. And believe it or not, an egg that is laid today will become a adult butterfly in about 28 days. This was heavily cedared, and so whenever we let that fire, it was extremely hot. You can see on one of the hillsides where it looked like it, it just nuked it. <laughs> this plants that you're seeing growing up here now is an old seed bank that was here. And so we get the flowering plants, and then eventually it progresses into the native grasses. Uh, it's obviously had great effects. I have to be honest, before coming here today, I wasn't sure how effective cedar removal would be for restoring monarch habitat. And uh, I've seen with my own eyes how areas that were treated with a bulldozer and then a prescribed fire was applied, and now that's some of the best monarch habitat I have ever seen, loaded with milkweeds and nectar sources. For every 100 monarch eggs laid, only one of them gets to become an adult. The other 99 get eaten by predators and parasites. It is a dangerous world out there. Now, that's why it's important for us to have a lot of habitat to keep the life cycle going. The positive impacts are, are present. The whole plan's coming together. It takes everybody working together to help get that done. For a species that's declining, if we can bump their numbers, even in this little corner in southeast Oklahoma, I love it.